Hello and welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we are taking a look at the Anycubic Photon M3 Max, a printer almost as large as its ridiculously long name. Before we get started, a word from our sponsors and roll those credits. Direct Computers is passionate about building the best PCs for their clients. No job is too big or too small and their friendly staff are only a call away if you ever need advice. Their prices are competitive and they'll match any price you find online. All their orders will ship the next day once they're built so that it won't even take that long to get the PC you want. Don't forget to use the code HONEYBADGER at the checkout to get free shipping on your first order and check out the link in the video description below. Okay, let's get the obvious out of the way. First and foremost, this is large. So this is a 13.6 inch 7K monochrome screened resin printer. If we take off the case, we'll come back to the case in a minute, but you are looking at a meaty machine. So we've got dual linear rails, we've got a full board ball screw, we've got a really solid build plate, we have resin auto filling, we have a relatively nice vat, we have pretty much everything that you could ask for. It doesn't have um, any odour elimination or carbon filters or anything like that, and it doesn't have a heater. But what it does have is a really affordable price tag. This is one of the larger domestic grade 3D printers for resin that you can buy right now. It turns out some absolutely amazing prints and the price tag is a thousand pounds. Let's just let that sink in for a moment a thousand pounds, which means you could own this rather than owning a pre-built Prusa Mark III. Or you could own two of these rather than a frozen Mega 8K. I have an 8K printer that I have done a number of these similar prints on, and the difference between 7K and 8K, non-existent. Certainly not noticeable at the human eye level. This has done an absolutely stunning job on everything that I have thrown at it. Let's very quickly, because I want to show you this before we get into more of the specs and more of the detail. Let's very quickly show you some of the prints and the print quality we have been getting. So let's start with this. This is the cabin for my Back to the Future train. And it is absolutely flawless. If we get in here, you can see all of this printed really nicely. The underside, we've got some pitting there. That's from the supports. This needs to be sanded back. So everything that you see in black, except for the train, we'll go over that in a minute. Um, everything you see in black was printed in conjure resin, their, their, their hard resin. This here is a miniature bust that we have done um, some, some initial Zenithal highlights on, just so you can see some of the detail that this model has and is throwing out. Absolutely stunning detail on that. This is from Photos Mint and I absolutely love this model. So this is a, a cave troll from Lord of the Rings. And if you get in there nice and tight, you can see the texture on his skin. 
you can see the teeth, you can see the chain detail, everything. There are a couple of holes that obviously I put in it. Uh, we also have this guy. So this guy is a, I think he's like a lizard priest or something. Again, I did this for some of the surface texture and my God, at 7K, it is absolutely flawless. So we're printing at a 0 0.03 layer height. So this one here is uh, the Undead King from Lord of the Rings. And you'll notice that he's got a split in him right here. And the reason for that is because I went too thin on my shell when I hollowed this out. So I should have actually seen on the model that that was causing me problems. Um, I wasn't paying enough attention to my slicer settings, but take a look. I don't know if it'll focus on that. Let's find out. There we go. Look at the detail on the helmet, all the detail on his armor and everything else. Absolutely gorgeous print and giant. Absolutely giant. Really, really nice. Carrying on with some of the stuff I did for the uh, for the Back to the Future train. This is the, so you can see there, designed by that guy. One old monster. So this, this is who did our um, Back to the Future train piece. So those are absolutely gorgeous. Let's now take a look at the train. So this is the top section of the train. This printed in multiple pieces, unsurprisingly. So obviously all of these portions here are all separate. This here printed separately and the spring is actually separate to the body of the rest of this. I'm not even sure what it's supposed to be, but it's super cool. And you can see underneath that this was all printed in standard any cubic grey resin. Now obviously I did, uh, I did hollow all of this out, but all this has had on it is a single coat of gloss black spray paint. And it looks absolutely amazing. All the parts came out beautifully. Everything went together fantastically. A really, really stunning example of what this printer can do on larger models. So, you've seen what the machine can do. Obviously, the detail is absolutely stunning. This has materially changed the way that we treat some of our larger models. So, up until now, we've had a 10.1 inch 8K, the Pegasus, absolutely stunning machine. And we have machines like the Tech 100 and the Proxima 6 and things like that. So, they're much smaller resin printers. So up until now, we've normally done heads and hands um, and sometimes bespoke pieces of equipment that are sort of quite small and fiddly and detailed. Um, that's because that's all that practically fitted on the printers. Um, and, you know, and it was an accent piece because faces can really make a model. Then we have now switched that up to, um, to doing almost every part of an actual character in resin. And we're now just doing bases and very large parts in FDM. We are gradually moving away from FDM printing because there has never been a point where I have said, oh, I'd like this, but a slightly worse version of it, please. I'd like it to take longer and I'd like it to look worse. There are absolutely people out there who are getting stunning FDM prints. The problem is, is when it comes to detail, when it comes to those fine, fine details, like the way that her hair stands up at the edge and the way that you can see the individual strands or the way it plays across her face, you cannot get that on FDM. You certainly can't get it at the level you get it with resin. Even if you could get an FDM printer to print at 0.03 layer height, it still wouldn't look as good as these resin prints do. And the time it would take would be insane. 
to be clear, we're not throwing away our FDM printers, not at all. If anything, we're gonna leverage our FDM printers to see how much bigger we can go with some of our models. Again, we had limitations before where very complex geometries just couldn't be supported in FDM properly. We didn't have the skills to cut them up as we needed to. Enter this. You can do pretty much any geometry. I am stunned that this part actually printed properly. So to be clear, this is a bell dome that has, a, that has like horns on the top and a completely detached spring. I don't know if you can actually see that because it's black on black. So maybe that's not a good example, but the detail that's in this is absolutely stunning. Now, to be clear, there are really no competitors in this space that are doing this price and this build volume with this feature set. There are only two things that are missing from this printer. One is it does not have the ability, it doesn't have a carbon filter to filter out all of that nasty smell and carcinogenics. And it doesn't have any sort of heater. So it doesn't heat the vat or the build chamber or any of that kind of stuff. But to be clear, this is a 1,000 pound machine. Now admittedly, there is around a two month wait on Anycubic's website to buy this machine. But there are plenty of UK, US and European based resellers who have these in stock on the shelves right now. Which is unfortunately not what you could say about the Frozen Mega 8K, which at the moment is about a three to four month shipping time. It is twice the price and what you get for your money is roughly two extra inches on the screen. Now, it's a great machine. I'm not dogging that. But the reality is, is this is such a powerful move from Anycubic. Now, that being said, the machine is not perfect. Not by a long shot. So first and foremost, if we take a look at my top for this, when you put this on, it very clearly doesn't line up. It doesn't fit. This is actually warped, as is the back section of this as well. That is really annoying. It's not world ending. It's not letting in too much light around these sides or anything like that. But there is a reality that if you're going to give me a kind of a crap lid, it would at least be nice if that crap lid went together properly. Now, any cubic have addressed some of these things and say they're going to replace different people's ones and they'll ship you out new lids and all of that. Personally, I haven't bothered simply because I don't, it doesn't bother me that much. It's just a little bit annoying. The second issue is not so much an issue, it's a comfort factor. So when you use the auto refill that's on these machines, first and foremost, you do have to use um, you do have to use bottles that look like any Cubics bottles. You can't use the metal ones or a lot of ones that like Esun do and people like that. You do need to use theirs. So first and foremost, that that's a bit irritating. The other thing is that in my opinion, this auto refill way overfills the vat. So the vat ends up coming up when the when the bill plate is in, the, the resin is almost coming over the top. Now, the only reason you would ever fill your resin tank that much is if you didn't have an auto refill and you wanted to make sure there was enough resin in there so you could print overnight and you're not going to run out. That makes sense. But if you've got a kilo of resin or a litre, sorry, of resin in this tank, and then you've also got another litre of resin that's in this bottle. There's very little that you could print that would require you for it to be that full. Now, again, I want to be clear. It's just an annoyance. And I wish this auto refill was adjustable so that you could push the prongs down. Now, you probably could get a screwdriver and you could bend the prongs down a little bit so they touch the water a little, they touch the, the resin a little bit lower. I don't want to have to bend a thousand pound machine so that the auto refill works to a way that I'm a little bit more comfortable with. So those aren't amazing points. 
The build plate is laser etched. It has a cross hatch design on it. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't found any material issues with it. Um, I'm using Akuma Mods advice and I actually have a, uh, I actually have a small razor blade that I use to, um, to go and get my prints off. If your prints are welded to the build plate, then your bottom layer exposure time is unfortunately too high. We have tried different resins here. So we have models like this, which was done in basic any cubic. Most of this model of the, uh, of the, um, of the train was also done in basic any cubic resin. We have Conjures Rigid Resin, which is the one Cheetu Box makes. And we have Iono's Red Wax Resin, which is also there. All of them printed really, really nicely. Akuma Mods did send me his, uh, his speed profile. Now I wanna be clear that if you use the stock settings in Cheetu Box for this machine, the print speed is slow. And I mean it's double the print speed that I've got on other machines. Now Akuma Mods has made a bunch of changes to light off delay and speed that everything moves about. And he's found that that's worked really well and he's managed to bring those print times down but it isn't the fastest printer that I have ever used. That being said, I really cannot fault what they have made here. The touch screen is nice and big, super easy to use. The build plate is a single knob with two big chunky carry, carry handles on the side. You've got dual linear rails, you've got a full ball screw in the middle, you've got a nice chunky vat, I mean, it is a great machine. If your budget can stretch, you will get, in my opinion, more joy out of this than you would out of, say, a pre-built Prusa Mark III. So the Prusa Mark III S Plus that, um, that, they, that they have just brought out, I believe is around 900 pounds assembled and shipped. For 100 pounds more, you could have this and you can be turning out absolutely stunning prints, stunning prints with this particular printer. There's a little bit of work to be done on build quality, things like the, uh, I'm not a big fan of the hood, I'm, I'm annoyed that it's warped. Um, but other than that, really, I, I'm reaching for things to try and dislike. I am reaching for things to try and provide some level of balance to the overwhelming positivity that I have for this machine. It is doing exactly what it said on the tin. I have not had any um, fails with this machine yet. To be clear, I am using, I'm using um, Akuma Mods Profile for Cheetu Box. I am mainly just using automatic, automatic generated supports it's working very well for the things that I am printing. Um, a couple of things took a bit longer than I would have liked. So I did, um, I did actually have one fail, which is trying to find the right print orientation for this cabin. So these wings are separate to the cabin, um, but trying to print something this large and this sort of square was a bit of a challenge for this particular machine, if I'm honest. It did kind of struggle with some of the more complex geometries. So in the end, I sort of tilted this back, hollowed it out, and I ended up printing it like this. And in the end, it printed really, really nicely. Um, but it did take a couple of attempts to get that right because it just wasn't working the way that I wanted it to. To be clear, resin printing is not for everybody. It requires extras, right? Your screen is going to eventually die. They normally have, you know, a few thousand hours on them. Um, there is a reality that they aren't particularly cheap screens to replace. Um, I haven't had an issue with my FEP yet. The FEP that's on this is a frosted NFEP. Um, again, I haven't had to replace mine yet, so I can't speak to how, uh, how complicated or how much of an issue it's going to be when I do have to replace it. Um, we will just have to wait and see whether or not it's, uh, whether or not it's, it, it's entirely unpleasant. I don't know the answer. Um, I am really happy with what this machine is turning out. 
I am relatively new to resin printing. Um, we have been resin printing for a long time. We were actually we actually bought the original Photon when it came out, but we very quickly got tired of the cleanup and the mess and the fails and the, the you know the everything you have to go through to try and to try and get those prints back. And we kind of just left resin printing alone for quite some time. Between this machine and between and the Pegasus 8K that we've got as well, my my enthusiasm for resin printing has skyrocketed. I mean, we are getting prints that mean we can start to push ourselves on paint jobs. And I mean, again, this is a really, really great 3D printer. Should it be your first resin printer? I would challenge no. I think that it's probably a bit too big to have as your first thing out of the gate. I would probably suggest that right now, Anycubic are doing the Mono X at an incredibly low price for what it is. And I think that's an absolutely fantastic starter printer. But if we're giving this a score, I'm gonna give it a solid nine. The reason I'm not giving it a 10 is that this, um, this auto refill, it does make me nervous. It, uh, it does overfill the vat and it just shouldn't and you can't adjust it, not good. And the fact that my hood arrived warped, also not good either. Um, but between those two things, we again, I am, I am scratching around at that point for trying to find things that I don't like. It would be good if this came, or had the option at least, to come with, um, to come with a carbon activated filter just to try and keep some of those carcinogens and trying to keep some of those uh, sort of awful smells that come with resin if it kept those out and look everybody would like a heated vat they're really cool but do you need one that really depends on where you print what you use your machine for or time of year and all that kind of stuff so I am giving this a solid nine out of ten it's genuinely really good it's super easy to use it was, in, it was very, very easy to set up. I will say that it did not come factory leveled. So I, ha I had to level the build plate and I had to set the Z offset. Now, with most printers these days, Frozens and Eligus and things like that, at the very least, the build plate is factory leveled and then you just have to do the Z offset. So that was a little disappointing that we didn't get that, but again, Relatively easy fix, 10 minutes, sorted, you know, it, it wasn't that hard. It is an excellent example of what any cubic can do and an excellent technical example of where resin printing will start to move towards. It will start to move towards feature rich, larger format, resin printing and hopefully that will mean that the cost of resin will start to come down as well when we first started resin printing a kilo of resin or a liter of resin sorry was about 65 pounds a liter which was very very expensive and it meant that doing anything other than heads and hands was really a massive waste Resin has come down in price. You can get it for about £25 a, a, a litre. There are some cheaper brands coming in that are coming in at, at under £20 a litre now, and that's obviously fantastic to see. Um, I don't really have anything else to say. The machine does exactly what it says on the tin. It fulfills all of its promises, all of its brief. All right, it's not necessarily ideal that the cover doesn't fit properly, but nobody's perfect and neither is this machine. So. Absolutely, should you buy one, I genuinely recommend that you do. I don't necessarily re recommend that you go and buy it directly from any cubic because their wait time at the moment is like two or three months. That's quite a long time. So, um, so what would probably be better is if you had a look at one of your local resellers, they'll more than likely have one in stock and you may pay a little bit more, but you may actually get it before your next birthday. So that'd be really good. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. We are so close to 10,000 subscribers now, it's unreal. 
Um, we will be doing a massive giveaway when we um, when we get to that when we get to that magical 10k as well. So keep an eye on the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out the link in the video description for our sponsor, Direct Computers. Thanks very much for joining us, guys. Stay safe.